Hello and welcome to today's request for concept paper discussion. Thank you again for joining us today to learn more about the AmeriCorps VISTA program and the process for requesting VISTA resources. It's great to see where everyone is calling in from today. Today you're going to hear from staff members from AmeriCorps the federal agency that administers the AmeriCorps VISTA program. You may also know us by our former name, the Corporation for National and Community Service. My name is Ann Oti, and I am one of VISTA's program and partnership specialists based in Washington, DC. Um, I'm a proud VISTA alum. I served in Harford County, Maryland from 2015 to 2016 and have stayed involved in national service since then in a number of roles, including working with both the AmeriCorps seniors and AmeriCorps VISTA headquarters team. I am joined by an all-star team today. Um, Mike Garcia is our other program and partnership specialist. Mike began his national service journey as an AmeriCorps VISTA member 16 years ago. He joined our agency 10 years ago as the state program director for New Mexico, and he has also held roles in our agency's Office of Grants Administration and the Office of the Chief Risk Officer. Stephanie Reitzman is our policy and guidance specialist. She began with National Service as a VISTA member in Helena, Montana, and has remained committed to National Service, serving in a number of roles, including extensive AmeriCorps field experience in Nevada, Oregon, Washington, and Alaska, and nearly four years with the VISTA headquarters team. So what exactly are we discussing today? We are going to focus on giving you the basic information you need to decide if AmeriCorps VISTA resources are a good fit to help your organization and your community. To do that, we will cover what is AmeriCorps VISTA, what are our principles and priority programming areas, roles and responsibilities, both of an AmeriCorps VISTA member and of a VISTA sponsoring organization. We'll cover how to apply for VISTA resources. We're gonna look at the application process, focusing on um, the first steps. And then lastly, we'll point you to additional resources so that you can learn when, where, and how to access the support we have to help you develop the A VISTA project. Um, we are super excited to share this with you today and to help you decide if taking the next step to join our national service community is right for you. So without further ado, let's focus in on VISTA. AmeriCorps VISTA is the national service program that strengthens efforts to eliminate and alleviate poverty through volunteering and the mobilization of resources. VISTA has four core principles that guides our work and the work that sponsors and members accomplish in their communities. The first is fighting poverty. A VISTA's project goal is to support efforts that address poverty and poverty related problems that individuals and communities are experiencing. This strives to empower communities. We want to engage residents and people who will benefit from the project in planning, development, and implementation. VISTA focuses on capacity building. By that, we mean that the goal of the VISTA project and members are to strengthen and increase the reach of anti-poverty initiatives in coordination with staff, community members, and volunteers. Lastly, we try to create sustainable solutions. We want the capacity developed through the VISTA project to continue even after VISTA resources are gone. So during their service, VISTA members develop systems, relationships, and knowledge, which they transfer to the organization and the community to sustain over the long term. Before we go further, I do wanna note a few definitions and terms that will help you understand our structure. We've already introduced a few terms to you. First up, VISTA project, project or VISTA project, means a set of VISTA activities operated and overseen by a sponsor. Sponsor, VISTA sponsor, or VISTA project sponsor means a public agency or private nonprofit organization 
that receives assistance through AmeriCorps and was responsible for operating and overseeing a VISTA project. A public agency may be a state, local, or tribal government. Project director or VISTA project director means a staff person um, of the sponsor who has been assigned by the sponsor the overall responsibility for the management of the VISTA project. Project directors are responsible for executing all aspects of the project as outlined by the sponsor. Supervisor, an individual who directly supervises a VISTA member. This can be the project level or at a partner site level. All member supervisors are trained. AmeriCorps provides a virtual supervisor training for supervisors. Um, regional office, our agency has field staff working throughout the United States. There are eight regional offices representing all 50 states, the District of Columbia and United States territories. Regional offices help develop, support and facilitate VISTA projects throughout their life cycle and are critical resources to organizations who want to apply to become a VISTA sponsor. We'll talk about VISTA members, leaders, and summer associates later on today's call. So now is a good time for me to take a breath and learn more about you. We are assuming that you are joining today as a representative of an organization interested in applying for VISTA resources. We'd like to know what type of organization you are representing today. So please take the next few seconds to select which organization type um, represents you and your organization. Give you a few more seconds to lock in your answers. All right, so it looks like um, the majority of you fall under local nonprofit. Regardless of your organization type, there may be ways that VISTA can support your mission and make an impact in your communities as we have for thousands of other organizations over the last 50 plus years. Okay. Let's jump back into our VISTA overview and take a look at VISTA's annual accomplishments. The AmeriCorps VISTA program has been supporting individuals and communities since 1965. In a recent year, the program engaged over 8,500 members in over 4,500 different sites. In one year, members helped mobilize 800,000 community volunteers. The VISTA members serve closely with community volunteers at some sites and are instrumental in developing processes to build volunteer recruitment and manage capacity. Through the VISTA members, sponsoring organizations and communities received over $206 million in cash and in-kind resources to support the VISTA projects and corresponding events. So let's go from the annual accomplishments of the whole VISTA program and zoom in on the accomplishments for a large project sponsor. The Homeless and Housing Coalition of Kentucky is an example of a great project. The project serves both urban and rural areas and they've seen an impressive um, results from the capacity building activities of VISTA members. In the rural areas, it is challenging for individuals to access housing services and to obtain third party verification of status as a person experiencing homelessness, which is required to confirm eligibility for some of the homeless service programs. That's not surprising as in some instances, organizations providing housing services are understaffed and under-resourced. In this project, 23 VISTAs provided capacity building services to 12 nonprofit human service agencies. VISTA members um, wrote funding proposals, 
recruited community volunteers and engaged in outreach efforts. And as a result of their efforts, those 23 VISTA members leveraged more than 2,000 volunteers who served more than 40,000 hours in the community. As a part of this project's resource development efforts and the VISTA's service, they raised over $738,000 in cash resources and over $880,000 worth of in-kind resources. Ultimately, more than 1,000 individuals received housing placement services and 320 individuals transitioned into housing and they are continuing to build processes and systems to sustain their activities. And keeping our eye on Kentucky, let's look at the accomplishments of a smaller VISTA project. The Audubon Area Community Services is a Healthy Futures project serving rural Western Kentucky. With just five VISTAs over the last year, they were able to recruit 127 new community volunteers and manage 144 volunteers who delivered presentations on opioid use and delivered life skills. They also raised over $110,000 in cash and in-kind resources to support those efforts. And as you can see, over 600 community members turned out to attend the recovery celebration event the VISTAs organized this past program year. Regardless of your project size, VISTA can help make an impact in your community. Now, after that spotlight, I will turn it over to my colleague, Mike, to talk more about sponsoring organizations. Thanks, Anne. So now that we have a basic understanding of what VISTA is, let's talk about the project sponsors. There are a couple of different AmeriCorps VISTA program models. The first and most basic VISTA program model is that is one that we call a single site sponsor. This is the type of sponsorship that refers to one agency hosting a VISTA project at one site with the VISTA member or members serving at that one site. So this means that the VISTA supervisor and the VISTA members would all be at the same location. An intermediary sponsor on the other hand is a VISTA sponsor that helps to provide AmeriCorps resources to other eligible organizations. Oftentimes, these other partner organizations are small and may not have the capacity to access such resources on their own. The intermediary org is an organization that has the capacity to develop and support multiple VISTA sites across a wide geographic area or among a group of organizations that addresses a common need. They provide administrative services, technical support, training, and oversight to the subsites. An intermediary project organization can partner with separate organizations to place VISTA members, or the intermediary organization may place VISTAs at their own chapter or affiliate sites. Effective project management is an essential part of a successful VISTA project and member experience. There are numerous phases and activities related to planning, implementing, and executing a project. Today, I'll touch on three components for sponsoring an organizations to focus on. First, be sure to develop your proposed project with community members. Community members from the population you intend to serve understand the community's needs and wishes, and they bring a key perspective in the planning, implementation, and evaluation of your proposed project. The community's guidance, support, and buy-in is instrumental in the project's success. Next, performance measures are important to our work and help keep us on track. We have national performance measures from which you can select with input and guidance from our regional field staff as needed. The regional field office can help you refine your project plan and ensure that the needs of the community and VISTAs are being met. You'll be required to report semi-annually on the performance measures you select. The information you provide in these reports demonstrate your project's results and resource management. It also allows our regional staff to provide you with better technical assistance to ensure the success of your project. And lastly, 
Project sponsors complete a couple of reports that provide us with information about the project status, successes, and challenges so that our staff can best support you and your project. The project progress reports or PPRS, as we just discussed, are completed twice a year. The information submitted in the report became part of the project's official record and is considered uh, when evaluating whether or not a project will be continued for future years. We have PPR guidance to assist you with writing and submitting reports. If you develop a project with multiple sites, you'll need to establish ways to collect and aggregate information from members serving at those sites so that you can submit comprehensive reports. You will also be responsible for completing the VISTA Progress Report Supplement, or the VPRS. This annual report tracks demographic information for your project. This report is typically due in mid-November and is based on our agency's fiscal year as opposed to your project year. This makes the reporting period October 1st through September 30th. To report on this specific timeframe, it is helpful to track information with your members on a monthly basis to accurately submit this report. We have resources available to help you complete this report as well. And you can find a link to an informational webinar as well as instructions on how to complete this report in the VISTA Sponsor Resource Guide. The guide is available to all sponsors. Some of the most important responsibilities of a sponsoring organization include actually managing the VISTA members. As a sponsor, you will be responsible for dra drafting catchy opportunity listings to announce your position and attract top quality candidates. In addition, you will also recruit, screen, interview, and recommend the best candidates for service. Recruitment and placement of VISTA members will take place on our web-based platform in addition to other recruitment avenues you identify. We have developed social media graphics, messages, and other promotional items that can help to assist with your recruitment efforts. Sponsors must provide an in-depth orientation to all incoming VISTA members at the beginning of their service, as well as ongoing training and professional development opportunities throughout the member service year. And it's probably no surprise that the best projects provide quality day-to-day -day supervision and support of their members. This includes introducing and orienting the VISTA into the community and organization, confirming that members have the space, supplies, and equipment necessary to carry out their service, providing reasonable accommodations to members who request them based on different abilities, and having regular check-ins and ensuring that members' actual activities are in line with their approved VISTA assignment description. Sponsors are also required to complete the sponsor verification form online every two weeks. This serves as confirmation that your VISTA members are still serving. You'll learn more about this in the full application process if your concept paper is accepted. Before applying for VISTA resources, it is important to understand that the difference between the VISTA program and other AmeriCorps programs. A VISTA member service year is meant to expand the scale, reach, efficiency, or effectiveness of programs or organizations. To do this, the project activity should focus primarily on capacity building instead of direct service. Let's think about what this looks like in practice. Consider an after-school tutoring project. A VISTA member focused on indirect service and capacity building may create volunteer applications and assignment descriptions for after-school tutors. They may design a school system to effectively recruit and place volunteers as tutors. Or they also might design volunteer trainings, materials, and a handbook to support the program. The systems and resources created by the member would remain in place at the organization long after the VISTA has completed their service. However, an AmeriCorps state or NCCC member engaged in direct service might actually tutor children. While VISTAs may not, may do some direct service, their service activities should be focused on these types of direct service activities with beneficiaries. If this is the type of service that your organization needs 
and having a VISTA create a community volunteer program is not feasible, one of our other programs may be a better option for you. You can find more information about our programs on our website at www.americorps.gov. While the VISTA program does not have a required match, we do expect sponsors to provide members with the resources and supports that they need to be successful. Additionally, we encourage sponsors to participate in our cost share program as they consider applying for a second or more year VISTA resources. This is a strategy in which, strategy in which the sponsoring organization pays the living allowance for one or more of its AmeriCorps VISTA members. This is an effective way for the VISTA program to reach more local communities across the nation. In a cost share partnership, the sponsoring organization is invoiced by AmeriCorps for the associated members' living allowance costs. You can see several benefits to the cost share partnership on this slide, which include increasing the number of VISTAs that your agency receives, expanding VISTA resources across the country, and showing commitment to the project. While cost sharing is encouraged, it is not required. As a sponsor, you will learn about the process and benefits of cost sharing when you talk with your assigned portfolio manager. Now that I have provided an overview of the VISTA program, models, sponsoring organizations, responsibilities, and cost sharing, I'll turn things back over to Anne. Thanks, Mike. So now that you have received background information about the VISTA program and the role of our project sponsors, I'm gonna focus on the most important resource, our VISTA members. In this segment, I will go over eligibility, their work, and corresponding benefits. VISTA service is a 12-month full-time commitment whereby VISTA members engage in indirect service to build capacity and sustainability in poverty alleviation programs. There are a few things that you should know. VISTAs are members. They are not employees, interns, or volunteers of or with the sponsoring organization. VISTAs serve at their sponsoring organization. They do not work there. VISTAs receive a modest living allowance that aligns with the community they are serving. So who is really cut out to be a VISTA member? While the typical image of an AmeriCorps VISTA member is a highly skilled recent college graduate, a significant percentage of members are baby boomers who bring a wide array of professional and life experiences to their VISTA assignments. These different life perspectives and experiences provide a unique lens from which each member views the world and tackles issues at the community level. VISTA members pursue their assignments for a variety of reasons, ranging from wanting to make a difference and eliminate poverty to learning new career skills and networking. Some other facts about VISTA members are on the slide. We also have VISTA leaders doing great work through the, throughout the country. These are individuals that have already served as a VISTA member for a year or more. The leaders help recruit, mentor, train, coordinate report writing, and generally support teams of at least eight VISTAs. They can guide data collection and interpret data, but not complete the reporting activities. And while they cannot supervise, leaders can coordinate, facilitate, and support the efforts of VISTAs. Now that you know who VISTAs and VISTA leaders are, let's take a look at what they actually do. So what do VISTA members do? Their impact in the communities they serve can be invaluable. VISTAs provide capacity building to organizations and projects and work to empower communities and lift them out of poverty. This is done in many different ways based on the sponsor organization, assignment, the community's needs, and their own creativity. Members are key in building and maintaining partnerships and collaborating with organizations and stakeholders. They create programs, include volunteering, including volunteer management systems and trainings, and also participate in various aspects of development and fundraising. VISTAs do all of this while living at the same level as the communities that they serve. 
Most people join Vista because they want to make a difference and it will be important for you as a sponsor to tie these capacity building activities to direct impact on low income individuals, families and communities. As you can see, VISTA members and leaders participate in a wide array of different activities within an organization and in their community. While there are countless unique projects and activities that are perfect for VISTA members, there are definitely some activities that are prohibited. On the slide, you will see a list of some things that VISTA members cannot do. Prior to service, VISTA members must complete the online terms and conditions course that details what's provided to members and allowed during VISTA service. If a member violates one of the terms of conditions, the supervisor must contact their AmeriCorps regional office staff immediately. The violations have different repercussions and for the protection of the project and any other members on board, it is critical to act promptly. The VISTA program is focused solely on serving communities domestically and members cannot work on any international projects. Engaging in religious instruction, conducting worship services, or engaging in any form of proselytizing during service time is prohibited. There are also some prohibited political activities. A VISTA cannot engage in partisan politic, pol political, whew, Partisan political activities while in service, such as fundraising for a partisan political campaign at any time, or identifying oneself as a VISTA while engaging in partisan political activities. <laughs> Along those same lines, VISTAs cannot be involved in voter registration as part of their VISTA service. In general, VISTAs cannot engage in or support political activity, religious activity, lobbying, or union organizing as part of their service or while perceived to be serving as a VISTA. Let's move on to the topic of supplanting staff or existing volunteer positions. Members shall not perform duties that should be done or are typically done by paid staff, existing volunteers or contractors. The role of the VISTA is building capacity to bring communities out of poverty and members do not typically perform direct service activities, except as needed in limited circumstances, such as for training purposes. So now that we have covered the do's and don'ts of VISTA service, let's review some of the member benefits. If you become a VISTA sponsor, you'll wanna know all of the benefits available to VISTA members so that you can support them and inform candidates during the recruitment process. In addition to benefits, which range from a living allowance, non-competitive hiring eligibility for federal jobs, and an end of service award, we have many others that aren't listed, including student loan forbearance. Not to mention the fact that AmeriCorps VISTA service time counts towards federal retirement, and in some cases can count towards state government retirement. Your project and the concept paper should clearly show the link between what your VISTAs will be doing with anti-poverty outcomes. Writing grants, but to what end? Feeding 30% more children than you do now? Building partnerships? Why? To move your organization's clients along a path from the financial literacy education you provide to the home ownership program another agency delivers? Your project and concept paper should include deliberate engagement of your beneficiary population and communities. Again, doing with and not doing for. Your project should be designed with the end in mind. When will your project become self-sustaining and how? And your entire organization needs to be along for the ride to provide support to your project and your VISTAs as it progresses to the end when it becomes a self-sustaining program of your organization. I'm now going to turn over the presentation to my colleague, Stephanie, to talk about the actual application process. Stephanie? Awesome, thanks so much, Anne. 
So now we've given everybody an overview of the VISTA program and of course the role that members play and the benefits that the program has for those members as well as the sponsor's responsibilities. I'm gonna shift the conversation a little bit here um, so that we can talk a little bit more about the VISTA application process and the steps that an organization would need to take in order to become a VISTA sponsor. We'll also touch on some of our programming priorities for this year. So one important thing to note is that with our application process, there's actually two main steps. So first, an interested organization would submit a concept paper. The concept paper is really where you're gonna discuss the need as you see it in your community and your idea for how you would use national service members, um, specifically the VISTA program, to actually address that need. You'll also wanna tell us a little bit more about your organization as well as the community you serve in the concept paper. Our AmeriCorps staff will review that concept paper to gain a better understanding of what you're proposing and to determine if those activities and, and your organization are in alignment with VISTA's programming priorities. So we have our next concept paper deadline is actually June 1st, so just around the corner. Um, we'll take a closer look at the timeline and some of those other steps a little bit later in the presentation. Um, if, we, if AmeriCorps does accept the concept paper, then your organization would be invited to submit a full application. Our AmeriCorps region office staff that Mike referenced earlier, they're available to provide technical assistance and guidance during the writing of both the concept paper as well as the full application. So they're available for you to talk through uh, project ideas that you might have and to get clarification on aspects of the program if you need. I strongly, strongly encourage you to take advantage of that technical assistance. So to create the concept paper, you're gonna to want to follow the concept paper instructions. And these are just found on our website, the americorps.gov website that's been posted in the chat there. Um, these instructions contain all of the details that you'll need on how to submit the concept paper and will really detail uh, what you need to include in that. The picture here just shows the cover page of those instructions. Um, please note that updated instructions are in the process of being approved. Um, so I do recommend then that you access the instructions through our website when you need them rather than simply downloading them to your computer to use at a later time. Uh, we try not to have any secrets here, so I want to go ahead and highlight for you several characteristics that we find in what we consider strong concept papers. So first, strong concept papers really will align with the AmeriCorps focus areas as well as our programming priorities, which I'm going to cover in just a minute. Um, we also see that strong concept papers really do align with those core principles we discussed at the beginning. Um, that means that the concept paper is really demonstrating how the project is supporting efforts to address poverty and how the sponsor is going to involve community members in the project development and implementation. Strong concept papers also identify how the service of the members will lead to increased capacity and sustainability of the initiative. Um, it'll also talk about how those VISTA members will generate public or private sector resources and also promote local volunteer service in the community. Of course, the more specifics that you're able to include in the concept paper, the better. Uh, we're really hoping that you can paint a clear picture of your project. Um, for example, you'll wanna make sure to include the number of VISTA project, or number of VISTA members, excuse me, that you're requesting for the project. And again, if you have any questions or if you're in doubt during the process, go ahead and reach out to your local AmeriCorps region office for technical assistance and they'd be happy to help you. So I mentioned that strong concept papers tend to align with our focus areas as well as our programming priorities. So each year we, um, the AmeriCorps VISTA program, issue program guidance, which outlines the upcoming year's programming priority areas for new project development. The program guidance for fiscal year 2021, which began back in October, is available on our website. We'll share a link to that later in the slides so that you can access that. Next year's program guidance will be the first for the new White House administration. So we do expect some changes with the current program guidance so that we can be sure we're aligning our program priorities to reflect those of President Biden. And more specifically, uh, the anti-poverty areas that we're seeing in the American Rescue Plan Act. 
So the program guidance really is a key resource. So I do encourage you to review this, but I'm gonna go ahead and highlight some of those key priorities for you today. And no surprise, many of them do reflect some of the current events we're seeing um, across the world today. So last year, we of course couldn't have imagined how a pandemic would truly upend the world. So many organizations have temporarily shuttered their doors or had to adapt their missions on the, on the fly, maybe serving much larger populations than their needs than they originally were. So VISTA really wants to support organizations that are addressing critical needs during the pandemic. In addition to the pandemic, which is disproportionately affecting Black and other communities of color, the longstanding racial inequities of our country have been elevated to a national conversation. We believe that economic inequity is linked to the history of racial inequity in this country. AmeriCorps as an agency is very committed to addressing these injustices. And AmeriCorps and VISTA will focus on awarding projects that advance racial equity and increase opportunity. So let's go ahead and walk through again a couple of additional highlights from the guidance. So under the AmeriCorps focus area of what we call economic opportunity, we're really looking uh, for projects that fall under the priorities of housing, employment and workforce development, as well as bridging the digital divide. In terms of housing, this priority includes transitioning individuals into or helping them remain in safe, affordable housing with a special focus on veterans and those displaced due to COVID-19. Organizations focused on eviction prevention are also strongly encouraged to apply. In terms of employment, priorities include improving, expanding, or creating job training programs, uh, again, particularly career and technical education programs. And as I mentioned, we want to continue bridging the digital divide. This includes improving access to computers and high-speed internet, as well as increasing the skills to effectively use this technology, particularly in underserved rural and tribal areas. The VISTA program will also give a priority to projects that meet health needs for economically disadvantaged individuals in terms of access to healthcare, as well as food security. In access to healthcare, we're looking at connecting economically disadvantaged individuals to preventative education and also to treatment and recovery services regarding the COVID-19 pandemic and the opioid crisis. We encourage public health agencies as well as their community partners to consider using AmeriCorps VISTA members to support contact tracing programs that would, that would serve low-income communities, but also that engages those community members as contact tracers. The CDC has called on all communities to scale up and train a large contact tracer workforce and to work collaboratively across public and private agencies in order to stop the transmission of COVID-19. Public health agency representatives can contact AmeriCorps VISTA directly at vista.americorps.gov for additional information. And lastly, as I mentioned, uh, food security. So alleviating hunger and increasing access to nutritious food particularly the development of alternate food distribution and feeding sites to accommodate closures of traditional feeding sites, such as schools or after school program sites. Potential partners in this area may include, but of course are not limited to individual food banks and pantries, networks of food banks, and of course, K through 12 schools and after school programs. Another focus area of ours is education. We uh, aim to support projects in this focus area that really focus on enhancing access to services that contribute to improved educational outcomes for economically disadvantaged children. This would include programs that are focused on school readiness um, and learning loss for economically disadvantaged children, K through 12 success, career and technical education programs, and programs focusing on college access and success for low income students. We also look to support STEM programs as pathways for economically disadvantaged students. And we continue to support projects that focus on low-income veterans and military families as beneficiaries. Priority focus areas in this include our economic opportunity focus area, as well as education and our healthy futures focus area. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pause. We're gonna do another poll here. I'd love to take a moment to hear from all of you if you have a focus area or a programming area in mind already. 
It's okay if you're not sure at this point, if you're still thinking about that, but we'll give folks just a minute to answer this poll. And then I am actually gonna pass things back over to Mike, who is going to highlight the results of this poll and close us out. Thanks, Stephanie. And it uh, looks like we've got uh, access to healthcare, which is leading the poll currently with a close second of employment workforce development. Uh, but, but thank you for submitting your response to our poll. So before we start answering your questions, I'd like to share some of the mechanics with you of how we'll apply for VISTA resources. And so uh, with that, uh, you will submit your concept paper in eGrants. Please note that this is different from grants.gov. On the screen, you, we have some screenshots of what you will see when you head over to AmeriCorps version of eGrants. If you haven't already, you will need to create an eGrants account and follow the steps on the slide. In order to move through the process, you will need your organization's EIN number and the organization contact information. If your organization already has an eGrants account, please do not create another one. Your organization will be issued one eGrants account. Once you cr create an account and log in, you will go to the lower left side of the screen and click on concept paper, which I have highlighted on the slide. In the next window, you will click on Fiscal Year 2021 AmeriCorps VISTA State New NOFA. Of course, if you choose to apply later, it may show Fiscal Year 2022 AmeriCorps VISTA State New NOFA. You will be asked to anticipate the length of the project period. Most projects typically last between three to five years. Be sure to select the focus areas and objectives that correspond with your proposed project. You'll also include the geographics, geographic areas that will be affected by your project. Please be sure just to list the cities and towns and states if applicable. If you're a former grantee or sponsor, there are a few additional questions that you will need to answer. The next section of the concept paper asks the applicant to complete four narrative questions. The narrative questions will allow you to explain your proposed project and the community that will benefit in depth. In the needs section, you will explain the unmet poverty related community needs that you propose to address with the VISTA project. Under strengthening communities, you should describe how your proposed project aims to come complement or expand the current efforts taking place in the community to address your identified community need. The organizational capability section is looking for you to detail your organization's capacity to manage a federal national service program. And lastly, those organizations that are interested in becoming intermediaries will answer the intermediary justification question. Intermediaries are larger sponsors who provide VISTAs to other legal entities known as sites through their project. If you are not applying to be an intermediary, you'll just type non-applicable. Please do not copy and paste the questions into the response box. You should write your responses in WordPad in order to avoid extra characters from appearing in your submission. This will also allow you to conduct spell check on your work. The green check marks denote that you have answered and submitted the response to that question. If the arrow icon is red, it means that the question has not yet been answered and submitted. Again, be sure to utilize the VISTA program guidance and concept paper instructions when writing the concept paper. Now that we have reviewed the eGrant system, and required fields to be completed when submitting a concept paper. Let's take a look at the key dates in the request for concept paper process. 
There are several deadlines to keep in mind related to submitting a concept paper. The concept paper due dates for the remainder of the year for 2021 are listed in the third row on the table. Our next deadline is June 1st by 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. After that, the regional offices will conduct a review and notify applicants of their decision. If a concept paper is accepted, the applicant is invited to submit a full application. If you're not ready to apply, but will be doing so next year, we have not finalized next year's timeline, but it should be posted before the end of July this year. Once you have submitted the concept paper, the regional office will acknowledge receipt within two weeks via email. If VISTA accepts your concept paper, the four narrative responses included in the concept paper will be pre-populated into your full application. Full applications will also be submitted in e-grants. If your application is awarded, your assigned portfolio manager will assist you in the development of the service opportunity listings to begin recruitment efforts. At that time, the organization will also develop a VISTA assignment description. VISTA provides virtual trainings for project directors or supervisors to help them get acquainted with their roles and responsibilities in addition to also providing training on member recruitment, including how to write a good VISTA assignment description. The VISTA assignment description is the required project description developed for each VISTA member. It is also a powerful guide for planning and implementing Ma most major responsibilities, including selecting a VISTA candidate, guiding and supporting members, and assessing performance. Now that I have gone over the application process, Anne will review some resources to help you along the way. Thanks, Mike. To close out this webinar, I'd like to point out some resources that will assist you in determining whether your organization would like to apply for VISTA resources. Remember, your regional office is your main point of contact to provide guidance and technical assistance when writing your concept paper and developing your project. So we have many, many resources and tools that will help you and your organization get more acquainted with AmeriCorps VISTA and decide whether you would like to apply for VISTA resources. Um, again, one of the most important things that you will need to know is how to contact your regional office. You can use the link that is on the slide and find the email, or you can simply type the two letter state abbreviation followed by at cns.gov. So I'm in Virginia, I would send an email to va at cns.gov. Regional office staff are available to answer questions and provide technical assistance. We have included the link to the request for concept paper notice and the concept paper instructions. Both will provide information about VISTA and guidance on what to include in the concept paper. And to supplement all of the information that we have provided this afternoon, you may be interested in watching a few videos to give you historical background information and provide context about the VISTA program. You can find these videos on the VISTA YouTube channel and on our website at um, americorps.gov. And that leads us into the Q&A session. I will turn the mic back over to Mike. Thank you, Anne. I, so now we have the question and answer portion of the presentation. And as a reminder, if you do have a question, feel free to ask your questions in the chat. Um, and with that, Stephanie, might you be able to help us as we go through the question and answers? I'm trying to quickly go through to see 
Yes, um, just finishing up an answer there, Mike. I'll go ahead and review while folks are getting their questions into the Q&A section of the uh, website here. I will go ahead and review some of the questions that we've answered already. Um, let's see. We had somebody requesting a copy of this presentation in order to help them promote the program. So I do encourage you all to uh, check out the answer. Anne has actually answered this for us. Thanks, Anne. Um, Anne has provided a link where there will actually be a live recording of the presentation posted there that you can share with folks. Let's see, we had another question come in. Um, Kirsten was asking if uh, she said, we match strengthening communities and organizational capability. Does it allow us to check both? And so this was regarding the actual sections of the application. And so these uh, sections are required for all applicants. So that's great to hear, Kirsten, that your organization is involved in both. And yes, we would like to hear from you um, regarding both of those in the narrative sections. And then we had another uh, question come in from Will saying, if your organization participates in lobbying and advocacy, does that diminish your likelihood of acceptance for a project that is not political. Um, and so we, of course, reviewed our prohibited activities. We know that our VISTA members are not able to engage in lobbying and advocacy activities. However, we know that many of our organizations do engage in this. And so as long as we can ensure that the members are not in, engaged in these activities or supporting these activities, um, that does not diminish the likelihood of your project being accepted. Um, so I will go ahead and pause there. It looks like we have had some more questions come in. Um, we'll switch over here and I'll see if we can just answer these live for folks. Um, does a project director stipend differ from the VISTA member? Um, I'm not sure I understand this question. Mike, do you know what Kirsten may be asking here? Um, I don't, but I will, I will try to <laughs> ask, answer it to my best ability. And then maybe if Kristen can uh, respond and let us know if we did uh, address her question. So a project, direct, project director does not re receive an AmeriCorps VISTA stipend. Uh, there are some instances where an AmeriCorps VISTA project may, may receive what we call support dollars which covers uh, in some instances administrative costs, such as paying uh, supports towards a project director. But those are, those are completely uh, unique situations. Not every project will receive uh, support resources. So, so to answer your question, Kristen, yes, they are completely two different things. An AmeriCorps VISTA member receives a living stipend and a project director is usually staff of a project, um, of, a, of an organization. They are hired staff. And sometimes uh, the, the salary of that staff is supported with support resources that AmeriCorps VISTA will sometimes provide. So hopefully that answers that question, Kristen or Kirsten. Great, thanks, thanks, Mike. And um, it looks like Kirsten is following up here in the chat and I see another question from her. Um, her question in the Q&A is, is there a minimum number of VISTA members required to also request a project director? And then she's also wondering if that requires a separate application. So I do just want to make sure um, one thing is clear. As, as Mike mentioned, we do, in some instances, offer what we call support grants to help cover for staff to manage the project. However, that's not um, something that we are permitted to do during the first year of a project. So if you see a need for a uh, to have a staff position to manage and oversee the VISTA project, that's something that you would want to talk with your portfolio manager about. Again, your portfolio manager is in the region office, and that's something that you could potentially pursue for the second year of your project. And unfortunately, with our current statute and regulations, we're not able to provide um, cash or uh, dollars to new projects. And let's see, we have another question here um, from Ingrid. It says, we currently have an admin staff person who has done volunteer management as one of many tasks. 
put a VISTA focus on volunteer recruitment to build out that program if it has already been part of a staffer's job. And this is where it, it, it gets a little tricky, right? So we know that VISTA members cannot uh, supplant the work of existing staff or, or previous staff. And so we'd really wanna take a look at what the role is that the VISTA member would be playing. Would they be taking what the staffer had already done and adding to it in a significant way, really building the capacity of that program? Or would they simply be continuing the duties of what that staff person was doing? Um, and so that's where you're just going to want to really think about what the needs of the organization are and, and how you want to build and grow that project. Mike, Ann, I don't know if you guys have anything you want to add to that. Nothing from me. I think you covered okay. it well. Great. Um, we have a question here from Dustin Phillips asking, how much does the cost sharing cost? Um, so in terms of cost sharing, this really varies because it's actually tied to the living allowance that your VISTA member would receive. And so VISTA members receive uh, varying living allowances, and that really is based on the cost of living in the community they serve. Um, so right now, I, I believe that that living allowance, it, it, I think the average is around between 12 and 13,000. Um, but in some of our higher cost living areas, that may be as much as eighteen to nineteen thousand dollars. And again, that's actually that's the exact living allowance that that person would receive over the year. So basically, you as an organization would be reimbursing us, and we would be paying that member's living allowance. Okay, let's see where we are here. Um, if the organization does not match funds, does this impact how many VISTA members the organization has? You know, this is really an, an interesting question. I think it's a great question. Um, VISTA projects are not required to, to cost share. Um, it's, it's not a requirement of the VISTA program. However, the cost share program does allow us to place more members in the community. So each of our regions has a, um, a certain number of resources that they're allocated. And so they would need to be able to fund the project within their own resources. And so sometimes if they're very limited in their resources and their available resources, then if an organization is able to cost share, they of course are able to have more members. Um, so it really just kind of depends with how we are in terms of resources, but it shouldn't impact your ability to be funded or not. And let me know if there's any follow-up questions on that. I know that's a little tricky. Um, let's see, Mike, I'm going to throw you a question just so I can take a drink of water here. Um, we have a question coming in from Annie. She says, if the organization is statewide and plans to place VISTAs across the state, um, are, I believe it said the question just moved on me. Are we considered, yeah, are we considered an intermediary organization or not? Hi, Annie, and, and that's a good question. So an intermediary organization ultimately is if all of your members are not going to be placed at one site location, they would technically be considered an intermediary organization. So the, the short answer to your question is yes. Um, there, there are two kind of pots of what I consider intermediary organizations where an organization that has statewide reach, and I'm gonna give a broad example of let's, let's say Habitat for Humanity where they have under the umbrella of Habitat Phoenix, they place or uh, members throughout the entire state but with Habitat for Humanity organizations solely. That is one type of intermediary organization. Another is where, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, where VISTA members are placed within sites where the site might not have the capacity or capability to host a VISTA project itself. So they're a partner organization. And so I expanded a little more on your question, but I, I felt it might be helpful for, for any others that might kind of have any questions about intermediary organizations. Awesome, thanks, Mike. 
Um, we have a question here from Helen. Helen is a new to learning about the VISTA program. Um, she's currently a full-time director for a uh, before and after school program. She's wondering how much time it would take to successfully be a VISTA site. Um, she wants to ensure that she has the right amount of time uh, needed for that. And so I guess uh, two things here, Helen, as, as Mike just mentioned in terms of our in intermediary projects, sometimes if, if an organization doesn't have a whole lot of time to dedicate to a project, it can be beneficial if they become a site of an intermediary. So you may contact your region office and, and see if there's already an existing intermediary in which case, you know, you could become a site of that intermediary. This would reduce um, some of the burden placed on your organization in, in terms of, you know, having to complete some of the federal reporting. You, of course, would be responsible still for giving some of that information to the sponsoring organization, but you wouldn't have to navigate our various um, e-grant systems and, and things such as that. Um, one thing to note, though, that regardless of whether you are a, a supervisor of a site or an overall project director. Um, as we mentioned in the presentation, it really is important that you're able to designate some amount of time to the VISTA member or members serving on the project. Those are the projects that we see really succeeding. Um, VISTA members are, are coming into this. A lot of times they haven't had a whole lot of professional experiences yet. So it really is helpful for the member to be able to, to have a supervisor that is accessible. Um, this doesn't mean extensive handholding necessarily, but it does mean very regular check-ins um, to make sure that things are on track, to make sure that they have what they need, the support that they need. Um, so we do want to make sure that anyone serving as a, as a site supervisor has that time and ability. Um, let's go ahead. I'm trying to scroll through here, see where we are. Um, let's see. If you receive three VISTA members and then a few years later require more assistance, would the sponsor be able to apply for more service members during the current commitment period? I'm not sure I'm fully understanding standing if this is a, a current project or this is a project that is closed and then would be coming back in. Let's see if we can get some more information from Janice or Mike and feel free if you think you've got an answer to hop in. Sure and maybe I'll just try to give some context in both instances. So so Janice if your project is had received three VISTA members and is closed you would have to apply again for, for a brand new project. If your project is still active, then that's where you would work with our field staff to look at the opportunity, look into opportunities to apply for more service members. As Stephanie mentioned earlier, there are a limited amount of VISTA resources to go around and each regional area is allocated so much resources and you would have to work with your specific regional office to look into the opportunity for bringing on additional uh, VISTA members. And so hopefully that, that helped provide some clarification. If it didn't, Janice, please feel free to uh, provide further clarification to your question in the chat. Thanks, Mike. And we do have another question here. Um, if working as a site for an intermediary, what is the application process? And can you further explain the differences between the two VISTA projects? Um, so each, if, there, if you're looking at becoming perhaps a site for an existing intermediary, each existing intermediary really will have their own kind of application process and deadlines. But if you're interested in seeing if, if this is an option, we would have to make sure that there was an intermediary, an existing intermediary um, it, it, in your area. Um, so the best way to do that really is to reach out to your region office contact. 
um, which, you know, as Ann mentioned, you can do that by using the abbreviation of your state. So I'm in Idaho, for example. So in Idaho, I would email ID for Idaho at cns.gov. Um, and so that's how you can start uh, that conversation with your region office people. And they're gonna really be able to help you determine if it makes more sense for you to become a site of an intermediary or if it would make more sense for you to apply to have your own project. Um, and I know I see here you've asked for a little bit of uh, difference in, in terms of the, the two project options. So of course, if you're coming in and coming in as a site under an intermediary, you would be working more directly with that intermediary than you would with us as, as the AmeriCorps staff. Um, so the intermediary would actually have the responsibility for completing the federal grant application, for completing any of the federal reporting um, elements that we recover, that we discussed. But of course, you would still have a responsibility for funneling that information up to the intermediary sponsor. If you have your own VISTA project, you would be doing that information on your own and submitting it directly to AmeriCorps. So those are the, the main differences. Mike, I don't know if you have anything else to add to that. No, I think you've covered it well. Um, so we do have a question. Is there a minimum number of VISTAs that must be hosted? Is this number per year or over a multi-year award? Um, currently, we, we do not have a minimum number of VISTAs that must be hosted in order to be awarded a project. Um, but we do want, want folks to realize, we, we often encourage folks to, to think about it or think of other organizations in their area. Um, it may be helpful if there are if there's a larger need, because it can be, you know, it's, it's a fair amount of work to do for one VISTA member. Um, so you may want to think about how you could expand that, and that may be other needs within your own organization, or perhaps even with some uh, partner organizations in your community as well. And let's see what we have here. I've lost my place. Mike, I don't know if you have those pulled up. Sure, I'll, I'll jump to the question that I see another cost share question. Uh, are there any resources that the org can look at to see how much they would need to match in order to have a certain amount of VISTA members? Uh, so to kind of reconfirm, the cost share amount is based off of the AmeriCorps VISTA members living stipend. So it is going to differ from geographic area to area. Um, you would then look at what the pay rate is for the particular county in which these members would be serving. If you, for example, if you have all VISTA members placed in one county, they're all going to have the same living stipend rate. Whereas if you place them across several counties in a state or states, there, there is a chance that those stipend rates are going to be different. Um, and I guess we can, Stephanie, maybe this might be a question that you can help the, in regards to the pay rates by county. That is available, not part of the, I'll let yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is available. I'm working right now on pulling it up. I'll see if I can put the link into the uh, chat. And so I, I do just wanna, I'll, I'll put that in there, but I put it in there um, and I, I wanna caution folks, these are the living allowance rates um, that were effective July 5th, uh, 2020. Um, so under the American uh, Recovery Plan, our agency uh, did receive some additional funds and some of those funds, of course, are supposed to go to increase the living allowance for our members. So we will see a living allowance for our members go into effect later this summer. Um, I, I think it may be a more significant uh, cost of living uh, adjustment than what we've seen in, in past years. So I'll give this to you guys now, but I do encourage you to uh, check back and for updated amounts. You can also, of course, ask your, your region office and they'll be able to provide you. But I just want you to know that this, this may be outdated by the time it's relevant for you guys. So I'm gonna copy and paste that in for you. 
And Stephanie, I hope that uh, also helps to address the question sent by uh, Tour Burns. And they asked, how much does an organization have to pay or match to host an AmeriCorps VISTA? And yes, I think so. And, and thanks for taking for addressing that again, Mike. I, I think that's super helpful. Yes. And so I'll hand it back to you. Um, let's see what we have here. Um, our organization is involved in strengthening foreign origin communities in all over the state. Do you allow this? I'm not sure I fully understand. I'll attempt to address, but please feel free to um, to go ahead and, and comment in here. Um, we, we do have projects that are, are working on serving um, immigrant and refugee populations um, here with, within the country. Um, we do allow that, but if you would like to give a little more or information about your organization and the work uh, that you are involved in, go ahead and feel free to put that in here um, or raise your hand and we can attempt to address that. Um, you can also reach out to your region office if you would like. And then we have a, a question here, and this is this is from Alexandra. Um, can you explain the difference between a supervisor and a program director? And some of this we understand is absolutely semantic, so I appreciate you um, asking the question. So, so we sometimes distinguish the difference between the two of these. When we think of a, a program director, that could be someone that is responsible for the overall project. So for example, if you're uh, if you have an intermediary project, you would be responsible not only for any members that are serving at your site, but any members that are serving at other organizations as well, um, but that are a part of your project. Um, sometimes we refer to just what we call a site supervisor. If it's someone who's not responsible for the overall project, but may just be overseeing a member at a specific site that falls under an intermediary. So sometimes these, these words are really one and the same. If you have, you know, Mike kind of walked us through those two project models. And so if you have the very basic, simple project model where the members are all serving, you know, at your site with your organization, then really you would be the supervisor and the, the project director. Um, but if you're an intermediary, then those roles may be different. So hopefully that helps there. Let's see, what training is required and provided for site and project supervisors and who pays the cost for these? Yeah, so, so we do have, we do provide training um, in, in a number of ways for both our site and our project uh, supervisors. So we do this, we do have a, a basically a required supervisor orientation that we provide. Um, this is all done virtually. It's, it's a series of trainings in which you'll participate. But then we also have ongoing training um, that we at the VISTA program provide. And that's just in the form of monthly webinars. Um, these are optional, these are not required, whereas kind of the the initial training is required. And then you'll also have training uh, that's offered and, and provided by your portfolio manager that's located in the region office. Um, so all of that is, is provided by us. Um, so we would pay the costs associated for that. Um, back before COVID days, we did try to bring all of our sponsors together uh, once a year for an additional training opportunity. I don't know if we'll get back to that. We certainly hope we will someday. Um, and then, in terms of providing additional training for sites, your sites, if you are a project director of an intermediary, your sites are eligible to participate in the training that we provide, but we do encourage you as an intermediary project director to have training for your own site supervisors. And that's because if you're overseeing an intermediary, you're likely gonna have your own um, kind of rules and policies that you want your sites to adhere to. Some of that is going to be the same of, of our, you know, rules and policies, but some of that may depend on you're going to need to be collecting data from your members and, and from your project supervisors so that you can complete progress reports. So you're going to need to figure out how you want to do that and then be able to communicate that information for your uh, to your sites. And so there's other things like that that you would want to uh, cover and provide that training for folks. And so that's something um, that you you would need to cover the cost for that. You know, again, you, we don't dictate how you do that. If you wanted to do that via webinar or whatever technology, um, that would be fine. 
And let's see, do we have, I'm not seeing any other questions coming in here. Oh, I think we've got one coming in. Um, let's see, what are some key attributes of the most successful VISTA projects? Financial stability, grant readiness, established programs, supervisor availability. Um, this is a great question. Um, we, we're actually involved in an extensive research project right now that we are engaging all of our VISTA sponsors in because we're, we're really trying to get some more information about this. You know, what are those attributes? Um, I, I will say anecdotally, um, just from my, my time spent managing VISTA projects, I, I would say a lot of it, it really is, um, I, I would say alignment with, with kind of the VISTA principles, um, but also that creating that member experience. So projects that are really able to um, engage the member, figure out, you know, how to make the member feel as though they're a part of the organization, engage them in professional development opportunities, you know, ensure that they're learning um, kind of on the job, so to speak. I, I think that those are really important. I think that those supervisors that are really able to, to reach out and, and check in with the member and provide that support um, really do seem to, to be strong in, in providing that member experience and then tend to be a little more successful. Mike, I don't know if you want to add to that based upon your, your time out in the field as well. Um, yeah, it, it's, it, it can be a varying of factors. And, and I'll go through what you had asked about financial stability. Yes, you want to ensure that there is that stability to ensure that you have the appropriate supports that will lead to successful VISTA member terms. Um, grant readiness. You, you do because there are the requirements of the reporting. And one, one thing I also want to remind folks is also the renewal applications. You want to, these, those are time consuming um, factors and you want to ensure that the organization has the appropriate staff in place to get those requirements completed uh, and, and completed in a manner that is appropriate. Um, established programs, that's not necessarily required in the sense it doesn't have to be a long-standing established program. You can, it can be an idea that you want to get up off the ground and utilizing VISTA service to build that capacity. Um, but And then supervised availability, yes. You, you do need to ensure that there is the appropriate supervision in, in place, whether it is the direct supervision of the VISTA member or the overall project director. It is, uh, you wanna ensure that those supports are in place. So um, hopefully that helps. Yeah, think, thanks Mike. I think that's super helpful. Um, I do just wanna add that as you're developing the project, if your concept paper is approved, then, then really the expectation is that you'll work quite closely with your region office. And some of that will include developing that very clear project plan and not only a project plan, but you'll also be responsible for developing what we call VISTA assignment descriptions. And I think those organizations that are really able to spend, uh, spend some time upfront kind of planning and thinking about the project from beginning to end, knowing that there may be changes, but really putting those things in place, um, we, we see a lot of success there. So again, just having that kind of clearly thought out, uh, detailed project plan, making sure it's logical, as well as kind of a, a clear direction for the member, I think that's really helpful as well. Um, I am looking here, I don't see any questions. We'll give folks just another minute or two in case there's any remaining questions. I wanna thank, thank everyone for staying with us here. I know it's been a lot of information that's been covered. Um, thanks, Anne. Anne has just posted in the chat here. We had a question from Helen. Will all of these links be provided to us with a copy of the PowerPoint? So if you scroll up in the chat, you'll see a number of links. Um, but Anne has also uh, copied the information here for our request for concept papers notice, which of course includes all of this information. This also includes the timeline that we referenced previously. Um, and again, just as a reminder, the next round of concept papers, concept papers are due on June 1st. 
So if, if you're thinking about it, then I encourage you to check out some of these materials. You can go ahead and contact your region office as well if you'd like and, and have a conversation with them. And I am not seeing any more questions here. Let's see, Anne, Mike, do we have anything else after this to close us out? No more questions, but we do have one more poll. Awesome. LSI colleagues can help us bring that up. And we just want a little bit more information to see if after attending today's webinar, how likely um, you and your organization might be in becoming a VISTA project sponsor. Looks like we may have a busy June with some project development. That's exciting. exciting. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you for participating in our poll and thank you for taking the time to attend today's session. If you have questions as you work through your concept paper, you can reach out to the regional office staff. Um, remember, it's the state abbreviation at cns.gov. Um, a recording of today's session along with the slides will be posted on the concept paper um, website. And other than that, I hope that you have a wonderful afternoon.